Okay, everybody. So in this video of the Safari 101, I'm just going to cover briefly, briefly, not briefly, briefly, what this subject is. And I have it already on the whiteboard here. Whether you can read it or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to give you guys links in the bottom in the description of the YouTube video to go to each one of these websites, to different different websites even, to learn more about this. Because this is something that, you know, it takes a lot of research and a lot of knowledge and it just it can become overwhelming when it comes to this stuff so that's why I'm going to hit on some other subjects in here as well but uh, I'm just going to give you guys a brief rundown on this stuff let you guys get some knowledge on it it's um, something that you need to dive into it's something you need to talk to your outfitter with before going and it's something that you guys should get a broker and what this stuff is is on CITES top sprints import and export of uh, game hunted abroad and we're going to talk about the subject of Africa because it's Safari 101, but I use DNL Custom House Brokers. Uh, Lisa and Katie are their um, specialty specialists, the know-alls of importing and exporting of wildlife trophies hunted abroad in the United States. Um, and so there's a lot of different stuff that goes into this stuff. We'll kind of break it down. And uh, but if you're gonna go on a safari, I suggest you get a hold of DNL Lisa and Katie to start prepping for your hunt because this is stuff you need to know prior to leaving on your hunt and stuff you need to be aware of when going on any international hunt whether it's CITES or TOPS. So let's start over here with TOPS. TOPS is actually only a South Africa deal and what it is is threatened or protected species and it was created in 2008 to manage game and then you know it's it's not just the game it's fauna, flora, it's all of it but we're, gonna, it's, we're just talking about species huntable in South Africa and so even leopards on top but you can't hunt them right now in South Africa but so what it is is just to make sure that they know what's happening regulate the hunting of it and it's like there's species that are like you think are everywhere super like you know you think there's no way they can be threatened or whatever because you see them everywhere on everyone's game farms and stuff such as like the black wildebeest but you need a top permit for this and guys you need the top permit done before you go over to Africa. Your PH or outfitter needs to obtain the permits for you prior to you arriving. So when you do arrive, you fill it all out. And before you even go in the field, your TOS permits are ready to go for you. And I'm going to have the full list on the website. I'll give you guys links to stuff on that. But just a few species that are on there would be like the Bontebuck, the Blue Diker, the Black Wildebeest as we talked about, the Orby, the Cape Fox, the Elephant, stuff like that is on the list. And it's key to know these things prior to going because if you don't know prior to going, you might not know that your outfitter might not be doing something correctly. You want to make sure you have these permits prior to you arriving in South Africa, prior to you going afield. So you need to make sure that's handled and taken care of. Next, we're going to talk about CITES. Now, CITES is a big conglomerate deal throughout the entire world. So this is something you need to look out for. It's a convention of international trade and endangered species of the wild fauna and flora. Again, we're just going to be talking about huntable species because there's all sorts of different stuff on there, plants, fish, everything on there. And so they're broken up into penises. One, two, and three. One is pretty much you're not going to be hunting any of these species. These are the species that are most endangered, threatened, or extinct. Trade is prohibited anywhere. You can't export, you can't import, and none of that is as allowed. So appendix one, you're probably not going to have to worry about that. Number two is a very common one for hunters. Um, you know, there are species that are obvious on the list, such as the lion, leopard, elephant, and then there's species that are not obvious on there, which is the baboon. You need a CITES for a baboon. You didn't, wouldn't think that, but that is something you need. Um, so the CITES appendix two is threatened. If not con controlled, export permit is needed. So that's just a note I wrote in there. It's in areas that if it's over hunted and the trade is not regulated, the species could become threatened or endangered. Um, all our galleys are on there. You know, like I just said, the, the leopard, the lion, the rhino, the elephant, baboon, species like that are on there. You got to have CITES permits to export them from the country and into wherever you live. No matter if you're from US, Canada, wherever, you still need an export permit from that country of origin of the species. Then, getting into that, we're going to get into that a little bit. U.S. Fish and Wildlife um, gives you an import permit. So what we've seen in recent years is our galleys have not been imported in the United States. Even though U.S. Fish and or not sorry, even though CITES allows you to hunt them, U.S. Fish and Wildlife hasn't obtained the correct paperwork and documents that they think is necessary 
to allow importation in the United States. There's a lot of things such as polar bear, black rhino, the cheetah, the brown hyena that are all legally hunted in their home countries abroad, the Marco Polos, the Argalis in Mongolia. Those are all legally hunted. There's permits available from the country. There's sightings available. But then the U.S. Fish and Wildlife is not allowing them in the United States. It's like its own government of it, which is another topic we can dive in on in a separate video. I don't agree with it because if it is legally hunted in the country it originates from, they say it's legal, the proper paperwork is from them, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife shouldn't have any regulation over that because CITES is over it and all that, but that's a whole other video. These are just things you need to look out for. And number three is a case-by-case -case studies, essentially. Like saying, you know, I'm going to use North America. This isn't, this isn't legit, but this is kind of like an example. Like Wyoming has a lot of antelope, but you know, we have a lot of antelope, but you got to have a CITES permit to export it to Colorado if you take one or to, you know, you come from Kentucky and you shoot when you got to have an export permit that way. It's just Wyoming deciding that it needs that permit. It's not the United States, that's Wyoming, so it's a case-by-case -case kind of study on the, the species in a certain country or area that it's from, kind of regulated that way. So that's kind of case-by-case -case studies and it's the same thing as export permits from the, the origin country. Um, so, like I hit it on, U.S. Fish and Wildlife is the one that brings in import permits. And right now there's a lot of things going on. Like I said, the, the Marco Polos, you got your uh, polar bears, your brown hyenas, um, your cheetahs, like stuff like that. They're not being allowed to be imported in the United States, even though they're legally hunted abroad. So these are big things you need to look out for. And like I said, DNL, these ladies, Lisa and Katie, are on top of it. That's their full-time job. They are all on top of it all the time. They know updates, regulations, because no matter where you're at in the world, especially Africa, things are always changing. It's a constant change, you know. You can't bring animals in from this place. You can't export them from this place, yada, yada, yada. It's always changing. So it's always good to have a, a company and people like DNL, Lisa, and Katie that are on top of it. That This is their livelihood. This is what they do every single day compared to me and you. Or we're not going to sit here every day studying it, helping other people, learning new rules and regulations. So it's good to have somebody in your back pocket that knows what they're talking about and is there to fight for you. Trust me, Lisa, she will fight for you. She'll do anything she can to help you. I've used Lisa on a ton of different stuff over the years from, you know, Dagos and Tur in Azerbaijan, Leopards in Zambia. They know their stuff. They handle it correctly and they will fight for you. They will make sure everything is, you know, all the correct paperwork's done. They won't let anything slip. They're a great company, great gr group of gals that work there and they know their shit. So, Guys, make sure you get a broker. You don't have to use DNL, but I suggest it. I've had buddies that have went through other people, lost beds or Ibex, like the full thing just disappeared in state because of the poor shipment process of it. Um, I've had buddies not use brokers and they've had to deal with paperwork um, that they didn't do correctly. Things have sat in Denver, Colorado for months, accumulating storage fees, accumulating you know, cape losses, accumulating wrong paperwork so, so animals are actually taken from you. We've had stuff back in the day through, through other different importers and making sure that the outfitting company even gets their paperwork done. I've had a hippo taken from me from US Fish and Wildlife. We've had a mid-Asian Ibex taken. So guys, you gotta make sure all the paperwork is up and up and legit and the gals at DNL take good care of you. We can go into a whole different subject on that but I just wanted to kind of give you guys a breakdown of top print CITES and using a broker. So that's kind of how I wanted to go about this. Thanks for watching this. Stay tuned for the next video on the Safari 101 course when it comes to hunting Africa. I want to give you guys the best information that I know possible from all my years of traveling the dark continent.